consequences of the austerity agenda are pretty obvious. Uh, they're uh, in Europe where they're being imposed more strictly. They're uh, devastating the societies. You know, these are rich societies. They're increasing debt as anticipated. They're uh, creating a huge number of unemployed. In the United States, which is in this, in this case more progressive than Europe, they're, they're being applied, but uh, less rigorously, and they're having a milder version of the same effects. It's not because people want it. So like in the United States, for example, where there's plenty of polls, uh, the general population uh, considers the main problem to be unemployment, not deficit. And they're right. Uh, in fact, the deficit's probably a good idea right now. It's a stimulus to the economy and it's a way to create more jobs. Uh, even the IMF is coming around to accept this. Uh, so who wants austerity? Well, bankers, rich people, the people who run the world, they want austerity. Uh, one reason is, uh, you know, they're concerned, they're uh, lenders, so they're concerned that maybe somewhere down the road, invisible now, there might be inflation, which is bad for people who lend and good for people who borrow, so they don't want to take that chance. Uh, and uh, the other is that uh, the austerity programs have the nice effect of dismantling the hated welfare state. And that's bipartisan in the United States. Uh, Obama's uh, talking about it too. Uh, you got to go after the poor. In fact, like, I take my getting here today. Okay, I flew. Well, there's one part, this sequestration, which is about the deficit, not unemployment, the big problem. It's got a kind of a nuanced character to it. It leaves out rich people. So one of the things that's excluded from the, uh, by congressional decision, from the uh, sequester is... Uh, 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 air, air, air flying, flying. You've got to have enough flight controllers so that rich people don't have to wait a little bit when the plane comes. Uh, on the other hand, poor people who, let's say, whose kids are being thrown at head start and can't get Medicaid, well, you know, minor problem. Uh, so it's adjusted, the sequester. For, and you know who flies. It's not the general population. It's privileged people, overwhelmingly. And that's typical. That's the way the country works. Uh, and it's the way the, uh, the public sees things. So there's recent studies came out by good political scientist Ben Page and uh, uh, Larry Bartels to good, uh, in which they just studied attitudes towards uh, deficit, austerity, and uh, jobs uh, ranked by income level. And it's exactly as you'd predict. The very top of the income scale. Uh, the problem is deficits, so we have to have austerity. Uh, the rest of the population doesn't agree. And uh, we don't have a functioning democracy. We live in a plutocracy. Um, about roughly 70% of the population, lower 70%, their views have no influence on policy. They're disenfranchised. And you get more influence as you go up the scale at the very top. That means, you know, tenth of one percent, you know, basically get what you want. Uh, well, what they want is, uh, they don't care if kids uh, don't have schools or, you know, uh, don't get Medicaid or uh, don't have Head Start. Uh, they want to make profit. And uh, they want to get rid of this annoying uh, welfare state. And it's, it's even said. You know, Mario Draghi is the head of the European Central Bank and has been one of the more forthcoming about trying to do something about the crisis. Uh, he had an interview with the Wall Street Journal in which he told the journal that uh, he said the European social contract is dead. Social contract means you know, the welfare state, one of Europe's great contributions to civilization in the past years. They can now kind of dismantle it. He didn't say he wanted that, he just said that's what's happening. And yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs>